International Policy Code, a weekly program hosted by Les Vermazari. A two-day Fifth International Conference on the Right of People to Resistance, the case of the Sahrawi people open today here in Algiers. Well, here with me, retired Major General Keith Mokoape. He is a convener in South Africa chapter, and he's uh, one of friends of Western Sahara in South Africa. Major General Keith Mokoape, welcome to our program. Thank you. Thank you. And again, here uh, here's Dr. Nasir Issa Fagi. He's a president and academic staff union of universities from Nigeria. Dr. Nasir Issa Fagi, welcome to our program. Thank you. I'm happy to be with you. Well, the program is about Western Sahara. I wanted to ask you a question. What are the main themes of this conference? Oh, the main Nasir. theme of this conference... Uh, and this is a fifth conference in solidarity with the people of uh, Western Sahara, organized by the National uh, Committee here in uh, Algeria in support of Western Sahara. And um, we have all been called from all corners of the world to come and express our solidarity with the people of Sahara, uh, uh, Western Sahara, to ensure their self-determination for their total freedom. And we're hoping that out of this conference, the message will come out clear to Morocco that their time is up. The people of Western Sahara deserve their freedom. Major General Mokwape, what, what do you expect from the conference? I expect from the conference that the world must hear us. And those who were doubting that the cause of the people of Western Sahara is, a, is an ordinary human rights issue must now understand that both the United Nations and the African Union have clearly defined resolutions that call for the total decolonization of Africa in particular, and that Morocco, having colonized illegally Western Sahara, must be told in no uncertain terms by this declaration from this conference that the time is up. And, and of course, we also want to send a message to the people of Western Sahara that they are not alone. In their struggle. Mm. Thank you very much. Dr. Nasir Issa Fage. Well, uh, the mobilization of the international community to acknowledge the right of the people of Western Sahara to self determination is what is the, one of the themes of this conference. And our expectation is that uh, at the end of this conference, mm -hmm. the international community must come out clearly and tell Morocco to hands off Western Sahara, its people and its resources, so that the people will be allowed to determine their fate as a nation. We expect that at the end of this conference, mm -hmm. the international community... Well, it's worth recalling that today it's the first day of the conference. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, now I'll come back to you, Moko Ape. Well, about the historic relations between the Polisari Front and ANC in South Africa. Well, uh, as you well know, that the African National Congress is the mm -hmm. oldest liberation movement in Africa. Exactly. And right from the time of its formation in 1912, the slogan was, Africa must come back to its rightful owners. And it mm -hmm. was saying to the Berlin Conference and the European colonizers, Africa must come back. So ever since then, there has been a very strong relationship with all the African countries as they got independent and the liberation movements. Insofar as Western Sahara is concerned, when uh, uh, Morocco invaded Western Sahara and launched the, uh, 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 and the people through Polisario launched their struggle, the bad thing was that the apartheid racist South African regime assisted mm -hmm. Morocco with weaponry and the mm -hmm. gallant forces of Polisario were able to capture some of that weaponry. And in mm -hmm. 1988, President uh, Mohamed Abdelaziz uh, mm -hmm. requested uh, President uh, Oliver Tambo to send his commanders to the bases in uh, the liberated part of Western Sahara to come and see this equipment. I was to see, to see by our own eyes. And I was one of the six commanders of the liberation movement of uh, the ANC, the fighting wing. Uh, mm -hmm. I was one of the six who came here 
And uh, we literally saw That's this equipment manufactured in the Republic of South Africa. And when they showed us the prisoners of war uh, who had been captured as well, uh, we asked them, who, who teaches you this weaponry? And they talked about people, white people, who speak a language they did not understand. Neither French, neither Arabic, neither English, and it was Afrikaans, you know, the language yeah, of the races yeah, in South yeah. Africa. So ever exactly. since then, we have kept this relationship. We've been to the refugee camps. We've been able to come at different times, pledging support, but more than just words of mouth, we have also promised material support to see the extent to which we can make life easier, especially for the refugees in the camps. Well, I come back to you, Dr. Uh, Nasir Isafagi uh, from Nigeria. Uh, at the academic level, what have you been doing to sensitize students, civil society, for Western Sahara's struggle for self-determination? Well, uh, in the 70s, uh, the intellectual community in Nigeria, uh, including the student union movement, was able to put resources together to support ANC in its struggle against the apartheid regime. Now, we have been doing the same thing for other countries in Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to say that in Nigeria, we have been mobilizing uh, to ensure that Nigerians fully understand what is happening in Western Sahara. And to that extent, last year, there was a conference organized by the Nigeria Labour Congress on uh, the issue of the Western Sahara struggle against Morocco. And um, next year, we are organizing that is my own organization, Academic Staff Union of Universities, mm -hmm. is organizing a similar conference that we are having today in mm -hmm. April to make sure in, that... In uh, Nigeria. In Nigeria, yes. To make sure that um, we also mobilize fully to ensure that um, this case of self-determination... Are you inviting... In Western... Are you inviting other African Yes, students? we are inviting other Africans. In fact, all the participants to this conference today, mm -hmm. we are also going to be invited... Mm -hmm. And um, we will also make sure that um, we, from here, move to the camps to see what is happening so mm -hmm. that we can be able to determine what further assistance we will give our friends in Western Sahara. We mm -hmm. want to also make sure that because last year at the conference in Nigeria, we promised to support uh, three uh, citizens of Western Sahara for mm -hmm. higher education. So we want mm -hmm. to make sure that we repeat that annual on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been doing a lot for the Western Sahara issue because we are convinced that um, uh, every onlooker in a struggle like this is either a coward or a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. And we are also convinced that the international community must address this humanitarian crisis in Western Sahara. Mm -hmm. The only way that can be done is to allow the people of Western Sahara the right to self-determination. We'll do whatever mm. it takes to ensure that that happens. And it doesn't mm. go beyond 2015. Yeah, General uh, Mukaupe, anything to add about this? Just to follow up on about the, the, the South African yeah. view. The South African view is that uh, if on the West African part you have Nigeria mobilizing, then you have South Africa mobilizing Southern Africa, and we're happy that in Kenya there is already an embassy of Western Sahara and the movement in Kenya to support Western Sahara is growing. Then exactly. Kenya will cover uh, East Africa, then Algeria covers the North, then Morocco has got no space to play in. And exactly. we're also happy that uh, the African Union is now not going to rely on the resolutions of the United Nations only. Mm -hmm. The African Union already has appointed former president of Mozambique, Chisano, to be the special envoy of the chairman of the African Union on the Western Sahara thing. So Morocco is completely surrounded, and we want to also warn Morocco's friends who are busy taking the resources out of the water, out of the minerals that are there exactly. to Europe and all, that their trade relations with the rest of Africa may well suffer if they continue with the trade relations between themselves and Morocco mm -hmm. on plundering the resources of Western Sahara. And I would mm -hmm. like to say that 2015 is, a, is going to be a very decisive year 
both for the United Nations in general and for Africa in particular, insofar as Morocco is concerned on Western Sahara. And that we mm. shall going, we're going to live for and we're going to make sure that things happen. Well, I wanted to ask another question. Yeah. What is the situation of human rights in occupied Sahrawi territories? The situation in the occupied territories is worse than anything you can think of. The world tends to see only the Palestinians in Gaza. They mm -hmm. don't see what's happening here around the corner. The violation, the torture, the arrests, the kidnappings, the deaths of mm -hmm. people in Western Sahara. It's intimidation. The intimidation, all those things. And why is Morocco refusing independent observers to come and see? Why is Morocco now refusing even the special envoy of the UN Christopher Ross to come and see. Why is it that it is unhappy about former president of Mozambique, uh, Chisano? So Morocco is, is literally, literally in a corner. But we also want to address the people of Morocco, the people of Morocco, that their freedom lies in the freedom of the people of Western Sahara. And like Nkrumah said, there's no freedom for any country in uh, Africa for as long as one is oppressed by the other. So Morocco's time is limited, and limited. it's better that space opens up now. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Uh, Nasir Issa Fage, uh, anything to add about that? The Moroccan people, I think it's important that um, they understand that the government in Morocco is representing them, and they have a right to call their government to order and ensure that their neighbors in Sahrawi Republic mm -hmm. are allowed self-determination. We can all, there is a lot of space in Africa. There is a lot of resources that we can help each other to develop. Mm -hmm. And for as long as there is a colony in Africa, under an African country, for sure, the rest of us will not sit and continue watching. So we are calling on the Moroccan people to make sure that they put pressure on their government mm -hmm. to hands off the resources mm -hmm. of Sahrawi and that Republic and allow the people of Sahrawi uh, Republic to self-determination. A last word, General. The last word is Mokrape. that uh, uh, we sincerely uh, thank the Nigerian Support Committee. I mean the Algerian Support Committee, and uh, we say to them that uh, much as they've been hosting these conferences, the next one we would like to see in Layoun, the capital of Western Sahara. We would like to see the next conference taking place there. That's my last that's, question. That's our hope as well. Yeah, that's your hope as well, uh, yeah, Dr. Sure, sure. Nasir Issa sure. Fage, um, President, Academic Staff, Union of Universities from Nigeria, and retired Major General Keith Mokwape. He's a convener of South the Africa. South African chapter of mm -hmm. the International Movement of the Friends of Western Sahara. Thank you very much for being with us. Thanks, Thank and you. to your listeners. Thank you. Thank you.